Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Today, I will discuss a simple anatomy and physiology of neurovascular system and some pertinent related disorders. If you're ready, let's start. Anatomy and Physiology Cerebrum It has four lobes. First is the frontal lobe. It is for analysis, interpretation, and intelligence. It also includes the voluntary muscle activity and the broccas area, which is responsible for the production of speech. Second is the temporal lobe. It is for auditory and memory. It also includes the wernix area, which is responsible for the comprehension of speech. Third is parietal lobe. It is for sensations. Lastly is the occipital lobe, which is responsible for our vision. Cerebellum. It is for balance and coordination. It is also responsible for the involuntary muscle activity. Diencephalon. Thalamus and hypothalamus both are for hormone and sleep regulation, while hypothalamus alone is for thermal regulation. Brain stem. Midbrain. This is where you can find the basal ganglia. And in the basal ganglia, you can locate the substantia nigra, where you can find the dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that is responsible for smooth muscle movement. Pons. It is the pneumotaxic center. Medulla oblongata. It is the primary respiratory center. Both bones and medulla oblongata are responsible for breathing. Trigeminal neuralgia. The affected area is the cranial nerve number 5, and this is a unilateral. Signs and symptoms include severe facial pain and facial spasm. Management. Carbamazepine. It is used to lessen the pain and spasm. Diazepam. It is a muscle relaxant and a sedative. It is also used to lessen the pain. Bell's palsy. The affected area is the cranial nerve number 7. It is a one-sided paralysis. Signs and symptoms include unilateral facial paralysis, Incomplete closure of the affected eye, slurred speech, and drooling of saliva. Management, prednisone is the drug of choice. Facial exercise to promote circulation and warm compress to dilate the blood vessels. Seizure, it is a sudden uncontrolled increase in the electrical activity of the brain. Management during seizure. Safety of the patient is the priority. If the patient is on the floor, remove the things or objects that could injure the patient. If the patient is in the bed, the side rails must be padded and raised. Do not restrain the patient. It can only cause fracture. Evaluate the duration of the seizure. After the seizure, Assess the patency of airway, reorient the patient, and seizure precaution must be observed. Lessen the stimulus that can trigger the seizure, like noise and too much visitors. Provide also dim light room. Medications. First, we have dilantin. It lessens the electrical activity of the brain, and it is the drug of choice. Side effects include 
gingival hyperplasia, and red urine. Second, we have the luminal. It is a barbiturate that can also lessen the electrical activity of the brain, but the side effect is drowsiness. Lastly, we have diazepam. It is a drug of choice for status epilepticus. It is a sedative and a muscle relaxant. Complications of seizure is status epilepticus, a tonic phase that could last for more than one minute, which can cause to severe hypoxia that can result to brain damage. Management include diazepam via IM and oxygen therapy. Parkinson's disease. It is a progressive, irreversible nervous system disorder with a decrease in dopamine level. Note, dopamine, it is for coordinated muscle movement and it's also a muscle relaxant. Probable cause of Parkinson's disease is mid-brain damage. It is common to males that is 40 years old and above. Common complication is respiratory problems. Manifestations Resting, pill rolling tremors. It is the initial and the hallmark manifestation. Flat affect or the mass like appearance. Bradykinesia to akinesia. From slow to absence of voluntary movement. Propulsive shuffling gait. From a tiptoe walking to a running face. Passive rigidity, slurred speech, microphonia, which is a low pitch voice, and micrographia, which is small writings. Management, aspiration precaution. Anticholinergic agents like akinetone, artane, benadryl, and cogentin. You can use the code KABA so that you will not forget it. These are anticholinergics and it decreases the acetylcholine that result to decrease in rigidity. Its antidote is physostigmine. Next is dopaminergic agents like amantidine and levodopa carbidopa. It increases the dopamine level of the patient. Before we proceed, I just want to thank each and every one of you who keep on trusting my videos. For my new viewers, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep you updated. I really appreciate the support. Keep safe everyone. Next is multiple sclerosis. The antibodies attack the myelin sheet that covers the nerve fibers of the brain. The etiology is still unknown, but the probable cause is it is autoimmune. It is common to female that is 20 to 40 years of age. It is irreversible. Exacerbation and remission can occur if there is fatigue, extreme of temperature, and stress. Common complication is also respiratory problems. Manifestations First is spasm or spasticity. It is the first common manifestation to occur. It is the presence of pain and muscle rigidity. We also have the Charcot's triad. This is the hallmark manifestation. The triad includes scanning speech, Intentional tremors, which is the presence of tremors during activities, and nystagmus. You can use the word sin so that you will not forget the charcoal triad. Scanning speech, intentional tremors, and nystagmus. Next is bladder and bowel retention. Iscotoma, which is the blind spot, and sexual dysfunction. Management. Avoid fatigue, extremes of temperature, and stress that could trigger an exacerbation and remission of the disease. 
steroids like dexamethasone is used to decrease the autoimmune response of the body. Plasmapheresis can also be done to eliminate the antibodies from the patient's plasma. Enema, laxatives, and catheterization to manage the bladder and bowel retention. Muscle reluxants are also prescribed like lyrosol, dantrium, or diazepam to lessen the pain and spasm. Last topic is the traumatic brain injury. Causes includes vehicular accidents, fall, or violent acts. Types Concussion There is only jarring of the brain and there is no brain damage. Headache, dizziness, and unconscious for less than 5 minutes may occur. Next is contusion. There is a presence of bruising of the brain and brain damage may occur. Manifestations include projectile vomiting, severe headache and dizziness, decreased LOC or being unconscious for more than 5 minutes, and the patient may have amnesia. Lastly, is the skull fracture. Manifestations include raccoon's eye, which is the presence of periorbital bruising, battle sign, which is the presence of bruising in the mastoid area, autorea, which is the bleeding in the ear, and rhinorrhea. Management Steroids, this is to lessen the inflammation. Rest, to decrease the intracranial pressure. Oxygen, manitol, and rehabilitation. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.